Impossible, doing the impossible. Now, even that title or that statement usually goes whoop right over people's minds because we do not see ourselves. We have a hard time seeing ourselves doing the possible, you know? And, and you, you bring in impossibilities and it's like, that don't even jive. Doing the impossible, you, the sentence doesn't make sense. Remember what I was saying a couple weeks ago? The sentence doesn't make sense. You can't do the impossible, right? You, uh, oh, you can? Oh, I guess this word is, you guys are already in agreement then. No, you already know. You already know when it comes down to it, when you look at this in the natural, you can't do the impossible. I'll show you what Jesus even says concerning this. But there's another truth or a higher truth that we can get hold of that'll take us into this supernatural place where we're all supposed to be living right now. Now, I get it, religion and goofy teaching and instruction out there in a lot of places give us an insight or a picture of this super spiritual, crazy, weirdo walk and that's the only way you can get involved with anything in, in this picture of supernatural and you got to be eerie and have, you know, seances or whatever. And those are Christians. But God in his word, as far as what Jesus communicates is, it should be a matter of fact. In our lives, this should be a matter of fact. It, be, it shouldn't be something where something, a miracle takes place and we'll go, oh my gosh. It should be something where we're going. That's right. That's right. Now, <clears throat> don't get me wrong. This ain't an easy place to get to because there's a lot of battles that have to be won to get there. But I can tell you right now, in my life's journey, in my experience, I went from, oh my gosh, to expectation. Expectation. Listen, I went from a place where I'm, this quote newbie as a, as a leader in youth ministry. I've been through Bible college, but that don't mean squat. When it comes to literally doing this, it doesn't mean nothing. It actually probably messed me up more than anything else. But I was with a youth ministry in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. God told me to go there. I took a position as a youth pastor, which they were praying for. And I was in San Jose, California, Bible college, and God told me to go to Oklahoma. I don't even know what Oklahoma is. I don't even know where it's at. And that's what God told me to do. Before I went, a guy that I was doing some work for offered me his business, which was netting him 120,000 a year, net, before I left. He says, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll give it to you. Now, I don't know about you, but that is a setup. God's already got me going to a call that I know is his calling, and here I am getting ready to go, and the guy goes, I need to talk to you, something important. He goes, I'm gonna be moving, and, and he's, this guy's bank, he had a lot of money. He built a home in Ensenada, Mexico, and he was, gonna, he was gonna move there and live there. And he goes, I want to give you my business. I didn't even ask how much or anything like that because in my head is, I'm not gonna be here. I haven't told him yet. And, I look, and he says, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna, this isn't, you can purchase it. I'm gonna give it to you. And I said, I'm not gonna be here. And he goes, no, no, I don't think you understand. I'm going to give you my business. You, I, where are you going to go? He's thinking I'm going on vacation or something. And I go, no, I'm leaving the state. You're leaving the country. I'm leaving the state. He goes, but who am I going to give it to? And I go, I don't know. I can't. I know what God told me. He said, oh, the God thing again. And I go, you know what's a God thing. 
because I've always been really, really ministering to him and, and trying to get him to see the, the right way. Um, but that was offered to me and I, I moved and got, I, God took me to a church that was praying for a youth pastor because theirs was going to Australia on missions. And so I show up. And so they put me in as their youth pastor. This is my position now. I'm in this place where I'm, I'm getting in the beginnings of, you know, working with young people and ministering and where my heart is. And I've never been on missions. I've never been in a, a place where, uh, you know, you hear the stories of what happens in missions and missionaries and things like that and, and really awesome stories. But I remember thinking about what do I need to do to prepare this youth team to go on the missions field? And I thought, we'll, we'll go through the book of Acts because that's, that's about people doing supernatural, people believing in Jesus and doing these, these awesome things. And I go, we'll go through the book of Acts. And I started ministering to them. We were reading it all together. And we were just, it was something where everybody's really excited about seeing this. And, and I'm like getting, I'm getting pumped up too. You know, Peter, you know, said, hey, rise and be healed. And all this stuff is going on. I'm thinking, man, we're ready. So we go on the missions field. We're in Guatemala. Actually, we were in Living, Living Waters in Quetzaltenango, Guatemala. And they have an outreach, a ministry, missions, they've been there for years, that reach, that's reaching Central America in a major way. They have a Bible college. We're, we focus on their orphanage as far as financially, but that ministry, that's just another small part of what they do. Small part. It's a door open up to them to be able to take in these babies that were going to be left in the road. And they're raising it up in, a, in, quote, the Christian home ministry. It's awesome. So when you give, you're giving some, to some awesome, awesome work. It's great ground, great ground, great ground. But we're there, and we're, we're out there, and we're, we're putting on our drama that I helped write, and we're getting people saved. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds are getting saved. And we go into this convalescent home to minister to people, pray for them, sing, you know. And, and if you think of a convalescent home here and then one in Guatemala, they ain't the same thing. They are not the same thing. We're not talking about cush couches and chairs and, and uh, LED TVs. No, not there. Concrete room, concrete, you know, uh, block uh, seats. I mean, you know, metal folding chairs that probably were like 20 years old. I mean, it was a place where you're like going, man, it, 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 it felt like death in there. So we bring in light and we're, we're ministering, singing. And I had this one, this one 12 year old and we don't allow 12 years old, but he's gonna change to 13 at the end of the trip. But this guy was a thorn in my side. He was a little punk. And I don't know if you've ever dealt with youth or if you're a parent, sometimes your kids can be punks. This guy was a constant punk, constant. And I didn't want him to go on the trip in the first place. I didn't want him to be a part of this thing. And his parents came to me with him and said, he wants to talk to you about the trip. And I go, well, we're already done. We, we made you know, payments and it's, you know, it's too late. And he's not old enough. I'm already trying to shut this thing down trying to help God in his ministry. Because he's a rebellious little attitude, just frustrated me. But I never would show it, but boy, I felt it. And he says, Oklahoma, Pastor Dan, please. God talked to me last night. And I go, that wasn't God. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> that was here, up here. And he goes, and I'm supposed to go. And I went, I mean, at that point, I knew I was called to ministry because my heart melted. No matter how much he really, my heart was like going, oh, but how are we gonna do this? And his parents said, we don't need fundraising. We got the check right here. And I go, you got the money, you going. 
But so we made it way. I called the airlines. We got his name on. Everything's fine. He's going. And he hasn't been part of the group. So he's been like an outcast. But on his own, he's been reading and stuff like this. And we're there. And he comes up to me and he goes, Pastor Dan, that man over there is blind. And I go, I know, I seen it. His, he, his eyes were full white. There were no pupils. And he goes, well, you said, and I went, oh, what, what, what did I say? <laughs> you said, if we pray for him, he'll be healed. I went, well, I know I said that, but I mean, you know, I, I didn't say that, but in my head I'm going, oh my gosh, I'm on the spot. So I'm thinking, I, I got to do something. So I'm thinking, all right, God, I need a big prayer. I need, I'm trying to think, do I throw King James words? How am I going to do this? Because I, I, wasn't, I wasn't in the position to do something at that moment. I mean, let me get used to it. Let me do so. I mean, this is like the second day. And he goes, he starts walking. And I'm thinking, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, no, I'm the youth pastor. And in my head, I'm going, no, you're going to need to let me do this thing. And he goes up to the guy. I mean, he was just, it was like he was in a zone. And he goes up to that. He goes, Jesus, heal him. And in my head, I'm going, oh, that ain't going to work. <laughs> now you're going to have to spend some time on this thing. The guy literally st oh! starts screaming. And I start going, oh! <laughs> literally, these, whatever was over his eye, both eyes, whatever, they flopped off. The guy has never seen, ever. And all of a sudden, you see <clears throat> these brown eyes, tears. And he's just sitting there going, oh! And I'm going, oh! The, the boy's going, hallelujah, Jesus, hallelujah, Jesus. And we're just like going, oh my gosh. Amazing, amazing. So I got to experience that. And that's, that was the beginning of every miracle you can think of. I have not seen someone raised from the dead yet, but I guarantee you, if I had the opportunity whenever, I don't have doubts. But I've seen everything. I've seen miracles that you would not believe. I've watched arms grow. I've watched club feet turn. I've been in, I've been in people's homes, huts, where the, the child was skin and bones at 15 years old, never been able to move or walk, but just gets fed and, and it's just there. And go in there and the child start moving after standing in faith and praying. I've seen it. I've seen eyes open, deaf ears here. I got so many stories that would just amaze you. But why am I saying this? Because I was at that point where I could never really believe, but my responsibility was to believe. But up here, I couldn't. It was an impossibility that that was more in front of my face than the impossible becoming possible. And the reason why I'm sharing that is to let you know that I understand why it's difficult. You have a hard enough to believe that you can get up and be a, make it today. Many of you, you, you're in such a pattern of life that, that life is just this revolving door of you do this and you come, you do this, you come, you do this, and that's it. That's your life. And that's literally going to be your legacy. I lived and I died. That's it. But see, that's not who you are. The moment you received Jesus, you became part of something where your legacy now becomes redefined. And it's your responsibility to understand your responsibility, to move into this life that has expectation of supernatural. Hey, I've got the Bible. I get this. 
I see the Abrahams. I see the, I see the Isaacs, the Jacobs. The day. I see these people operate in the level where they don't have a clue how this is going to work, but they just keep pressing on and keep pressing on. Ultimately, we see them go, I believe, I believe. But it's not like you open this up and see these perfect angels or these people with no issues in their life whatsoever. It isn't like that. As a matter of fact, you see them with massive amounts of, of, of bad decisions. Something like us. Just goofy, goofy people in there. And the supernatural happening. I look at Jesus, not in new covenant. Jesus is walking on this earth. Old Testament covenant. Old Testament. These aren't people that are born again, spirit filled, and they have this new eternal life. These are normal people walking on this earth while Jesus is walking on this earth. That's what you have to understand. Because when the Lord is speaking to these people, they don't even believe in him as Lord and Savior. Do you understand me? But he never, ever mentions that one time when he's talking to these people in believings for supernatural. Never. He communicates in a way to get them to focus on him, to recognize the responsibility is to believe his word, believe who he is. And when they get to that place, no matter who they are, if they're a Jew or a Roman soldier, it doesn't matter. If they get to the place of belief, everybody say belief. Supernatural can work. I need you to get this. Because if you've received Jesus, he's in you. I mean, come on. We're talking about him not even being in you and the ability to see the supernatural work. And now he's in us. Now he's in us. Man, it should be commonplace. Commonplace. What do I need to do to get you to believe this? Well, I mean, you've got to come to this place where you get up in the morning and life is not the same as it was yesterday in how you believe and what you expect. That's why I say it's time to be great today. And I don't say that just as a fluff message or just something that, you know, hey, that's cute. I want you to believe it. I want you to get up every day and believe it. Because I'm not just talking about, oh, I'm going to be great today, make money. I'm going to be great. I'm talking about being great today. You a husband, good, be great today. You your father, good, be great today. Your mom, be great today. You cooking, be great today. Whatever, we need to understand it's our responsibility to believe that. And when you can start doing that, I guarantee you, and this is why I'm talking about it, the view of yourself will transform. You will change in how you see yourself. What that means is you value yourself higher. Right now, you guys have an issue with this because you don't see yourself valuable enough to receive this. Who am I? What am I? I'm a loser. I've never, I can't. And I'm telling you, those are all lying words. They're words of your past, but they're not words of your today unless you believe them. It's time to get different. I like that one. It's time to get different. There's a new one now. It's time to be different. Amen? Time to do the impossible. Doing the impossible. I got two words for you. Ready? Yeah. Ethan Hunt. Mission Impossible. Oh my gosh. How many in here don't have a clue what Mission Impossible is? And you guys played me like that? <laughs> Ethan Hunt, man, you should have been. Oh, come on. This ain't love life. What church is this? Mission Impossible. How, you know how many movies they have? Seven. 
Dead Reckoning is part one. Part two is coming out. Can't wait for it. I've seen them all. And every time I've seen them, there is no mission impossible. He makes it possible. Even though the name is Mission Impossible, he makes it possible. It's Ethan Hunt. No, actually, it's Tom Cruise. He can do anything. The dude's crazy, man. I, I mean, he, he's something. Doing all those stunts and everything. He's like 80 or something. I don't know. But I, what I need you to understand is, is that's not the spiritual truth I want you to understand. <laughs> Two words. Back in church now. We're back in church. Two words. Ready? Ethan. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> God's word, God's word. Those two words, God's word. You wanna make the impossible possible? God's word. This is what his word says. I'm gonna show you what in this, how he says it's Matthew 19, 25. You ready for the word of God? Come on, three of you? All right, how, wait a minute, wait, all right, this is a problem. I, I think like 80% are new. You, how, many, how many people are new here this morning? First time, first time, okay, a few of you? Okay, then what the heck is wrong with the rest of you? <laughs> I'll give them a buy, I'll give them a buy. Because they're new, they're like going, do I speak, do I sit down, do I quiet, what do I do here? Now what you do is you, you engage. Just like if I was talking to you. And if we're talking together and you're talking about something you love, and I sit there and go. How long are you going to talk to me? No, because you know, they ain't listening to me. They don't want to hear what I have to say. Do I need to bring another analogy for you to get it? All right. I'm not, I'm not saying, hey, make sure you talk over me. I'm saying, just connect with me, okay? If you're hearing something good, then do something like you're alive. <laughs> Show me you're alive. Because <laughs> I can't see you just breathing, all right? And plus, you know, when, when we look at Scripture correctly, not religiously, and you pay attention to it, if you listen to me, and all the things I try to show you and share with you concerning how this thing can come alive in your life. I've been doing this a long time, all right? A long time. I know what's necessary to get to the place to where I've been for years. I can promise, I can guarantee you, when we first started this, when God said, time for you to be a pastor, see, you know, uh, you're going to go out of youth ministry and you're going to become a, a pastor of, of a church, your own, and you're going to start it. You're not going to steal people from another church. You're going to start your church. And that's what exactly I did. I didn't like it. I went kicking and screaming, but I ended up submitting. All right. And in that place of, of starting this church, we didn't have videos. We didn't have it on, you know, on a screen or ability. We, we had cassette tapes. I know half of you don't have a clue what a cassette tape is. But you used to be able to listen to words and songs through those things, all right? And I promise you, I have some. I can pull one up in those early days and give it to you and listen to it. And I promise you, you're gonna hear and see the same guy. Why? Because this stuff is real. You can't fake it that long. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, the, it, I, you, you know, you can be conned and, oh, this is good, this is so exciting for a period of time. But ultimately, you're gonna, it's gonna, you're gonna be you and go, man, this is pretty boring. But see, this is living. It's real to me. It's real to my family. It's real to many of you in here yeah. now. Yeah. It's become real. And so I don't have to, I don't have to go back in my office and stir and get, okay, I gotta get pumped up for this. This ain't like a game. I don't have to put on music and go, all right, I just gotta get this, I'm gonna win this game. Let's go, let's go. I don't have to do that. I had to do that in the world before I played a game. Baseball, basketball, or football. I had to get ready. I had to get pumped up. 
I'd get my mind focused and you know, whatever I was, every sport I had a specific way. But I don't have to do that here. I'm pumped up all the time. It's game time Monday morning. I'm going to be great today, Monday morning. I'm going to be great today, today. So when you come in here, I wasn't looking through recipes. What can we do today? I'm ready. I'm ready. And I want you to be the same way. But when we look at scripture, I'm going to tell you, Jesus communicated in a way that was intense, but also in a way that was alive and something where people could look at him and go, I can do this. Though they were challenged a lot because of what the words he was saying and what they were feeling. And I want you to get past that. I want you to get to the place of belief. Remember when you started school? Oh, well, maybe you don't, but there was a time you started school, you didn't know squat. But you sat there in that little desk with those big old fat crayons. And that teacher that you had no idea who that person was, so your mom dropped you off school and left you at that stinking place. You've always been at home your whole life. She would never leave your side and she drops you off at a place that smells weird. It's school. To a, a person, you don't even know who, she ain't even a neighbor. And your mom's always told you about stranger danger. And now you're sitting there and maybe you have to go PVs. What are you going to do about that? Do you hold it? Maybe wet your pants? What do you do? Oh, wait, excuse me, I'm sorry. But that whole experience is what? It's a natural principle. No matter where you go on planet Earth, it's the same exact thing. Okay? So many of you that are part of love life, you've been here for a long time, you know already what that means, right? What does it mean? Y'all talking trash, only four of you answer me. It's a spiritual truth. Any natural principle means there's a spiritual truth to establish the natural principle. So what that means is I come into this thing, I don't know squat. I don't know anything. I'm new. So what I think I know, I don't know, because even scripture says you don't know anything. So if you want to learn, you want to grow, you don't come in with all your baggage. You don't come in with your, you know, your past religious experience, your past opinion. You come in fresh. Let the teacher teach. Pull your fat crayon out and start drawing what I'm teaching. And I promise you, I promise you, you do this for, for a while, I guarantee your life will never be the same again. We ain't playing here. We ain't playing religion. I'm not playing religious, you know, rules and regulations. I'm teaching you truth that will change your life, change your marriages, change your relationships, change your, change your everything about who you are to where your life becomes what Jesus said I've come to give you, life and life more abundantly, where it starts transforming. And that's what we want. We want what Jesus said I've come to give you. Not what some goopball on, you know, Christian TV is trying to tell you. What did Jesus say? I'm not saying they're all goofballs on Christian TV. I don't watch it. But either way, I'm just telling you that I'm not judging them all. But there are some weirdos. Even on Christian radio, there's a lot of weirdos. Even Christian, quote, YouTube. So anyway, moving right along. Matthew 19, 25, the disciples were astounded. Then who in the world can be saved? Jesus looked at them intently. Everybody say intently. They're freaking out. This, this is the rich young ruler story. The rich young ruler is this guy. He had his act together. He was morally, morally good. He was religious. He was a leader. He was successful. This guy, you know, had, a, had, had this life that was pretty clean. He comes rolling up to Jesus and, and, and says, Jesus, what must I do to, to have eternal life? What am I lacking? Now, let me ask you something. I just told you this guy was successful, morally good. This guy had his, had his life together. But what do you hear him say? I'm missing something. Pay attention to scripture. You think you can get this and all is going to be good? If I just get this, if I get that job, if I get this money, if I win the lottery, 
You be, you, we're all doing, you're doing this. If I just, just get this, I'm going to tell you right now, there's always a gap until Jesus is there. You're always going to be reaching for something, always reaching for something. And God's saying, listen, I'm the only one that's going to be able to fill that. You see people out there, I'm talking about Christians out there, they're trying to fill their lives with all kinds of stuff. God's secondary. They're not seeking first God. They're seeking first their, their wants. And what happens is they slowly start going backwards, which affects their lives in all other areas. You gotta be committed to press in. You want to be successful. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I can close the Bible and close my notes and go, go read some, you know, biographies of billionaires. And you're not going to see them just sitting around waiting for something to happen. They have a mindset of doing. They have a mindset of, 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 of going after things. And if they fail, they don't stop. None of them stop. And they fail multiple times, but they never quit. But we all want to be rich and we want to be billionaires, but we don't, we don't want to follow those principles. And that's what I want us to understand is we've got to change our mindset of success and have an attitude of winning, winning in life, everything. And you think, well, how are you? You sound like a motivational speaker. No, I sound like a God believer. I know the word. Like I said, I'm not a noob in this. I know what the Bible teaches. I know what it says. Paul said to the church, we're in a race. This is a race. And in his word, Theonustos, God breathed information. He says, run to win. So if you're asking me, I mean, you know, is this motivational? It better be motivational. God's telling you to do something. What? When? So you want to look at some, well, well, how does he want this? When? How does he want my family? When? How does he want my marriage? When? How does he want when? That's life. We're not talking about religion Sunday and then we turn it off. We're talking about Monday at Love Life, right? Love Life, Right? This is about Monday. Monday's the key. You know, you can work Sundays and Sunday's the key, but you know what I'm saying. All right. So it says, the, the rich man, he's up there and saying, you know, what do I do? Ultimately, Jesus says, this is the issue that I see that's holding you back from experiencing this kingdom living. What he was saying is, is he gave this guy an ability to go all in that he was looking for. He said, I need you to do this one thing. Come follow me and be, my, be a disciple of mine. Come on, let's go. He gave him one thing to do. And what he said is, and remember the word rich is there. This guy had mega prosperity. He had bank. And he heard Jesus say, hey, you check off that, check off that, check off. Hey, you're doing good, man. You're, you're good, you're good. And the guy's going, is that it? I got it. And he goes, ah, one thing, one more thing. This one thing right here. Give all your money away. All of it. And at that point, the Bible says, he turned around and walked away because he was very rich. Jesus goes on to say, because now the disciples are going, who's going to get, who can do this? The reason why I'm saying this is this is in the concept of Old Testament. And the Jews are trained that you rich, you're close to God. That's their concept, prosperity. Prosperity and God go hand in hand. So when they heard Jesus say that and the guy walk away, and then Jesus says, you know, it's hard for rich people to enter in. And they're like going, well, who's going to get saved then? Because that's our responsibility. That's our covenant. We need to believe to prosper. And Jesus talks to them in, in just an awesome way and says, listen, I need you to understand something. It's not about you becoming poor now. It's the understanding how my kingdom works. And he said, when you're able to give up stuff, and he says houses, he even says wives, kids, 
Now, you think Jesus is saying, hey, let's leave everybody. Let's leave our families. Let's leave. No. I mean, that's crazy how people get weird on this stuff. What he was saying is, is you got to have an attitude that says nothing is going to get away, get in my way of doing what God's called me and God wants me to accomplish in life. Nothing. My kids, my wife, my husband, the, nothing. I'm focused to be great today. Because you become the greatest father, mother, sister, brother, whatever. You will become that. But what he says is that attitude is priority. He says, and by the way, and this is a kicker. He says, but understand this. When you have the ability, I'm going to tell you, in this life, it'll multiply back to you. So that 10,000 I gave away, God's going, you follow me, I'm going to multiply that sucker back. What he's saying is you don't lose nothing in the kingdom. You'll never lose in the kingdom. You just have to have the priority right in your heart. Priority right. I've seen this so many times. People walk right, get right, prosper, and all of a sudden God never it stops becoming priority number one. And I've seen it every time where they start losing everything. That's not God's will, but that's what happens with people. We need to keep focused and keep walking this walk that he's designed us to live. Amen? In Luke chapter 1, verse 34, this is Mary. And no, it's not Christmas, but I'm going to talk about Mary. All right? Because Mary, that's usually when we bring in the Christmas message, right? Virgin Mary. You guys know Mary, right? You got to look at me. Who's Mary? Virgin Mary? All right, Saint Mary. Some of you guys know? All right. But this is her saying this. How can this be since I'm a virgin? The angel just said, you're going to have God's baby. How can this be since I'm a virgin? Now, angel came to her and said something totally impossible. Totally impossible. He says, you're going to bear the son of God. You're going to, you're going to carry and deliver the son of God. Mary said, that's impossible, right? Wouldn't you guys say the same thing? Yeah. I would. That's impossible. Is that impossible? 100%. That's not a possibility. That's impossible. Imp Everybody say impossible. impossible. That is impossible, right? Now we're thinking about the natural, the natural picture. That's impossible. That's impossible. Jesus said about the rich young ruler and to his disciples, he says, it is impossible. When they said, how can we get saved that way? He goes, it is impossible. Even out of his mouth, Jesus said, that's an impossibility, how to get saved. What was he saying? He says, it's impossible to get saved doing it by you. But then he says, with God, all things are possible. But he did establish an impossibility. He says, if you want to get saved, you want to enter in the eternal life, it's impossible by your abilities. By your abilities, he says, it's impossible. What does that mean? It's impossible. So there are impossibilities, correct? But then he said, but with God. Everybody say, with God. That word literally means connected together with. You're, you're, you're there connected with him. With God, nothing is impossible. So that means all of a sudden salvation becomes a possibility. It's just not my ability. It's God's ability. And that's what he did through Jesus. God's ability. I got saved through Christ. Not through my ability. While I was a sinner, Christ died for me. Jesus loved me. God loved me when I was a mess. Oh my gosh. Before I even believed in Jesus, before I even accepted there was a God, he'd be loving on me. He said, with great love. And then I become a Christian. I'm a follower of Jesus. Does God love me anymore? Does God love me? I don't know. He don't like me anymore. Man, what an idiot. How dumb can I be? 
when I was like, I don't believe in God, he was loving on me. All of a sudden, become part of him, he's like going, ooh, get away from me. Are you guys serious? This is how dumb we can become or how dumb we stay. It's because we don't let this word bring revelation to us that wakes us out of being goofballs. Listen, you can't, as a believer, as a follower of Jesus, God, God can't unlove you. Are you kidding me? He would have unloved you before, easily. Oh, you don't want me? I don't love you. You gotta thank God I'm not God. I would have got rid of y'all. I'd be by myself right now. <laughs> The point is, is this is the truth of who God is. He loves you. You should wake up every morning, even if you are a loser, all the day before. God loves me. You know why? Because that's the only way you're going to change. That's the only way you're going to be able to break these habits you're trying to get free from. You stay, you stay convinced of the ugly and the, and the sins and all the problems, and you keep crying, whining, and praying, and fasting, and, and begging. You keep the stuff fresh in your head. You got to get that out of your head, Romans 12, 2. Put in the new thoughts, and I promise you, the new thoughts, they start controlling your life. Your behaviors change. Isn't that what you want? You want behavioral change? I don't want to steal no more. We'll quit talking about it. Start talking about how you don't. You walk in integrity. There ain't no thief in your life. There ain't no thief in your home. Why? Because you're a person of integrity. I live a life of integrity. And you believe it and you speak it and you live it. I guarantee you it changes you. You don't have to pray about that stuff anymore. It happens. By the way, that's what the Bible teaches. She, uh, Mary goes, how can I, since I'm a virgin? Verse 37, for with God, nothing will be impossible. King James, New King James. With God, nothing will be impossible. Let me help you. That translation is not a clean translation. Now, y'all know I, I, I'm really into the Greek language and the Hebrew language. All right, so, okay. Not all Bible college was messed up. All right. I know sometimes I'm like, uh, just flush it down the toilet. There were some, there were some classes that I took that I still, because that foundation has helped me. All right. So I, I'm a student of the Greek language, student of the Hebrew language. I, I, I want to know not, I just don't go through and just get every, every, every little, you know, word and what it's saying. Just specifically, when I'm teaching or something God's showing me, there are times when I get into these specifics. And there's a reason why. It's because translations are not moved by God. The original was God-breathed. The translation is a religious mindset of taking a word into their belief system. That's why there are a lot of terminologies that are really watered down. Not the deepest definition of words because it, it doesn't jive with their religious views. So you have to pay attention to that. The, the closest, I would say the closest clean translation is King James, New King James. And, and then, you know, there's other translations that they get further, and it's just for the purpose of being able to read the Bible. And they're, and they're not being mean. It's just what they're doing. So you can get translations that are not, are not what you need to be listening to because they're not right in context of what the Word's trying to say. That's all I'm saying. Now, out of these translations, the, the NIV, which when it comes to the King James and NIV, King James is way beyond NIV in closeness to original. All right? So if you guys read the NIV, I'm not saying you're Satanist. I'm just saying that, you know, it, there's some translations that they're, they're not really clean. And I'm not this, I'm not in this King James only and all that, because I don't even read the King James. I'm reading all over. I read New King James, NIV, whatever I feel like doing but I place it to a place that I'm not trying to get the right translation because it sounds better. I'm trying to get the right translation to original. That's all I'm saying. 
And King James translates sentence. That's how it translates. So when they were translating it, they went by sentences. NIV is word for word. That's how they translated it. So in the NIV translation of this scripture, it's very important because it, it hits right on. And I'm going to show you. Watch this. Verse 37, this New King James. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Now that sounds good, right? How many, how many think that sounds good? But what's it say? For with God, nothing will be impossible. Now, what I see in there tends me to rely more on this is a God thing, not me thing. This is a God thing. God could do anything. He's God. Of course, it's impossible. It's God, right? So slowly I separate myself because that's God. Of course he can, right? Of course he can. Anybody agree with that? Of course he can. But that's not the original. Let me give you the original. No word from God will ever fail. <laughs> what? For with God, nothing will be impossible. What did he say to Mary? No word from God will ever fail. Woo! That becomes something totally different. Now it's not about, yeah, God, it's supernatural. Now it's, if God speaks it, what that word he spoke will not fail. Now the word in the Greek, there's two words for this type of, of communication when it's, when, it, when it's being used this way. There's logos and rhema. Logos and rhema. Logos is the information, written word, or, or stuff that enters in, like you're hearing right now, logos, spoken words entering into your mind. It sounds sort of like logical, right? So the logos is the information coming here, right? Rhema is revelation. Now, it's, it's, it's tied to enlightened or the information of coming into your life that goes to the heart. Logos goes to the head. Rhema goes to the heart. Not being Bible or religious or churchy right now, that's what happens in your life right now. There's information that goes to your head, and then there's information that goes to your heart the one that you believe, that you know. See, it came, it went here. Everybody understand this. It went from here to here. Please, please hear me. You all live this way. Do you understand this? You get information, and a lot of you have information up here, but you don't use that information. Or sometimes it goes away, right? Logos. But rhema. Rhema is that stuff that gets in here to where you're like, oh, no, I know. This is in the heart. Now, I'm not talking about the, the physical heart. I'm talking about your spirit, this part here that's here that it's where you know that you know, I believe. Everybody got that? So what we want is we need to get the logos because the Bible says the sower sows the logos. I'm a sower. I'm sowing. Jesus defines that as a farmer, a farmer plant seed, all right? Even me saying farmer plant seed, I got some Oklahoma twang there. Farmer plant seed, all right? You might think, how do you do that? Okay, back up. My dad's side of the family is from Arkansas. That answers your question, all right? My mom's side of the family, they're northerners. My mom's side of the family you know, they, they've come from Colorado. They moved, moseyed on down to Prescott. They're, they're, hello, Daniel. How's it going today? Arkansas side is Danny. How you doing, Danny boy? So that's why I can go that way. Just so you know that. I can flow both languages. I'm multilingual. <laughs> And I like it. I like it. My boys, they, they love it. They crack up. They say, I want to be just like you. 
they do get a kick out of it because I just, sometimes they just go off in it and I don't even realize I'm doing it. <laughs> no word, Rama from God will ever fail. Logos to Rama. Logos to Rama. Let me ask you something. I just explained to you that you do it all the time right now. So there are times, you, you already know that you're like going, it's true, huh? I get information, but so, sometimes that information comes down here. You know, maybe it's your, maybe it's a, a, a job, how you do it, or, or some type of, of specific belief that you have now that you know. You know, we're coming into Christmas time, right? And we know there's no Santa Claus. And if you don't know that, Rama is coming to you right now. Now, let's be honest. We can be honest in church, right? How many of you at one time believed in Santa Claus? Look at you all. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. I'm not proud of me because I believed all the way to sixth grade. I'm not kidding you. Now at school, I acted the cool guy. But I believed in Santa Claus until I found Santa Claus presence in November. That about broke my heart. I did. I found him. I never knew Santa Claus was layaway. <laughs> That's what mom would do. My mom was big on Christmas. And no matter how, we weren't, we weren't rich, but we would have presents because my mom was focused in on getting us presents. And if it took her all year for each Christmas, I'm, I'm telling you the honest truth, we would have a blowout Christmas. I mean, I'd wear the same Levi's for three months, but man, I'd have new toys every Christmas. But anyway, we all believed the one time and then we had to what? We had to change that belief system. We went from logos to belief and then we had to change to a new belief which became Rama. Everybody understand that? So y'all did that, right? Well, how awesome are you? Because I'm teaching on a Bible principle and you already are good at it. See what I'm saying when we get to church stuff, how we don't realize this kind of mindset? So we come to church and everything's hard. We come to church and we hear, I can't do that. You have revelation, Rama, logos. I just told you, you all do it good. And you're good at it. You got Rhema all through your life right now. Now all of a sudden you're like going, whoa, whoa, whoa. Man, this is, this ain't hard. I know how I can do this. I have some wacko beliefs. Yeah, so you, gotta, you gotta get new Logos and get it to the place of the heart, Rhema, and everything will change. You have a whole different belief system. That's what God's teach. That's what is God's word has taught us. But again, because it becomes religionized or Christianese, we don't see it. Just like when I talk about faith, I teach on faith. I got, I got the greatest faith teaching there is. It's so simple how to become a person that's operating in massive God faith. It's so easy. And the reason why is because you do it right now so easy. And people don't even get it. How can I be doing faith? That's for the pastor. You need to pray for me. No, you need to know what faith is. Faith is, biblically, the substance of anything confidently expected. That's it. This didn't say, faith is the confidence of the word of God and memorization of God's word and you're operating. No, it said the faith is the confidence of these expected results in your life. Y'all do a great job. Too bad most of it's negative. Too bad most of it's messing your life up because of all the negative things you confess and believe in your heart. What did I just say? share with you? That's faith. You are faith heroes. It's just the reciprocal. We got to switch it around from dark to light. We got to get to the, the blessing, not the cursing. Life, not death. But you're good at it, so let's turn the switch and start realizing you're good at God's word too. And God's word is bigger now. 
Because you're good at going, I can't, and you believe you can't. But all of a sudden, you're going to see the Word of God says, oh, yes, you can. And all of a sudden, you start going, no, I can. I can do that. And then all of a sudden, that Logos becomes Rhema. Not because everything becomes perfect now. It's because you believe. You believe. You believe. You got one plus one equals two in kindergarten or first grade. One plus one equals two. You didn't understand mathematics, but you got that one down. Guess what? You don't get that one down. You don't go any further. If you can't figure out one plus one equals two, you ain't going to be able to divide. You ain't going to do multiplication. You don't go any further. But you got to get the first one, right? That's what I'm trying to tell you. Once you get this understanding, this stuff isn't difficult, people. The Word of God is never written. It's in Koine Greek, which means street language. And that's how Jesus, that's how the apostles, that's how Paul's talking everyday language. He'd be talking military terms. Why? Because there's Roman soldiers everywhere. He talks about different things uh, of the Olympic Games that were going on back in those days. Yeah, the Colosseums. When he talks about fighting the fight of faith, he's talking about gladiators, people. Gladiators. Warfare. They understood it. We get it here. We're like, huh, huh? And then we try to spiritualize everything. I'm not, I don't have time for that with us. I want us to win now. I want us to have success out there now. Why, Pastor? Why do you care? Because that's why we're here. We're here to influence. We're here to make an impact. That's what light and salt does. Not be religious. We're not here to Bible thump. We're not here to show how many Christian bumper stickers I can put on my car. No, we're here to have integrity. To be people that are of your word. Are you getting this? Watch this. Watch Mary. The angel said, God's word is empowered. She goes, how can this be? I'm a virgin. This is an impossible statement. Angel says, God's word. God's word's the key. Watch what she does. Let it be done. Let what be done? The impossibility. I, I, see, she already making brain freeze com comment. Let it be done. What done? The impossibility. This is the ABCs of your miracle. The ABCs of your healing. Or, I don't know, week? I hurt my hand. This is the same hand that, this is what the issue was. The same hand that I broke jet skiing, that I shook it off and didn't accept it being broke and continued on life. This was years ago. And it was broke, but I believed, no, it's good. Hurt for a little bit, felt it, crack, everything, but wanted to continue to jet ski, wanted to continue to have fun. So I, I kept on and I just believed, no, my hand's fine. A year later, I was cutting a tree and there was a massive shock in my hand. I had a doctor's um, checkup coming up. So I told the doctor, I said, you know, I had a sharp, sharp pain in my hand. It just is weird. And he goes, well, let me look at it. He looks at it and he goes, when'd you get the cast off? I went, what? He goes, your, your hand, it was broke and it's been perfectly healed. When'd you get it off? I go, I didn't have a cast on. He goes, no, that's when he looked at me like, yeah, whatever. He didn't believe me. And I went, I, I didn't have a cast on. I haven't done anything with my hand. He goes, okay. Like, I don't believe you. I didn't ever go to that doctor ever again. But I was working out and I 
felt my hand twist a certain way because I was doing a, another exercise. And it was painful, very painful. And it's been painful. You can ask my wife. You can ask, you know. I mean, it, it'll, it'll be very painful. I move it, ah, I go like that. So I'm sitting there going, going through this. And in my head, I'm going, yeah, this is the hand I broke. And now I'm trying to convince myself the reason why I deserve the pain. Is that ridiculous? I'm trying to convince myself why I should have it. And God's word says, uh-uh. Oh, no, you shouldn't. I'm the pastor. I'm perfect. I, have, I, way, I know way more scripture than you guys. And here I am acting the fool. No, of course, I'm normal, right? Oh, I got a gift. I have no doubt about that. I know the word of God, know about that. But you know I don't walk around like I'm all that. I might look like it, but I don't. I just love God's word. And I want you to love it like I love it. I want it to impact you. I want you to see it the way I see it. I don't want you to read it to read it. That's stupid. I want you to live it. I want you to look at it and go, oh my gosh, this is so cool. And you just read two words. That's when you're getting this thing. And so I'm, so... Last night, I'm thinking about this, and I'm going, you know what? This is crazy. You are the pastor. Represent, dude. And I'm thinking, well, they don't know, but my family does. And I go, okay. I already know what the Word says, and I already know what you're trying to lead me to, God. I'm not that dumb. And I go, I don't have no more pain. You know why? because I don't have anything to have pain for. I don't. Yeah, but what about the work? It don't matter. This is my body. Jesus, Jesus went to the cross for my body. I ain't gonna do this thing. You don't, people, you need to understand something. I've been, I know these things. I've got miracle babies. I've got, I've got ears from just playing, you know, uh, softball where it busted my ear and the, 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 the specialists are going, you ain't gonna be able to hear out of your ear. Maybe 20%. And two weeks later, they're going, well, it's perfect. It's, it's perfect. So I know how to stand in faith. I know how to believe. I've seen it over and over in my life. I've seen it happen outside of my life, laying hands on the sick, and they recover. So I, can't, you don't need, I don't need convincing, but sometimes, sometimes you're just going through life and you start convincing yourself of something that ain't right. And I realize, you got to knock this off. You open the door here, you're going to have to open the door other places. So I slammed that door shut. I honestly, at that point, didn't care if I felt a pain or not. I, I honestly was sold out like, I don't care. This ain't right, and I'm not going to have this. Period. And guess what? It ain't there. Nothing there. There ain't no pain. There ain't nothing. You dummy. Is this crazy? It was like all week long, you'd be, you'd be, you'd be trying to show me who's in charge. And there's nothing there. So I'm all good. How about you? How about you? Ah, this is a part two. Don't worry about it. I couldn't end it right now. I'd have to go another hour. What I need to do is right now where you're at. You got, there's so many things that you guys are dealing with. Some of you, greater things than others, but you're still dealing with something. Things that you want victory over, things you want healing in, you want this. And we, we're putting our opinions and ideas and thoughts all over the place, except getting back and looking and focusing in, what does God say? What is he telling us? And he's telling you, it's time to quit living this way. It's time to be great today in every area of your life. I want you healed because it's already yours. I want you prosperous because it's already yours. I'm not talking about something that you could have. I'm talking about what's already in you. This is in you. It's in your DNA. Yeah, but you don't know how I was raised. You don't know how, it doesn't matter. It's all information. That has to change here. 
It's got to go from the Logos to the Rhema. We all have bad information. Right? We've all gone through bad information. And, and it's sad to say, a lot of people go to churches and that stuff stays there. And there'll be pastors that are convincing you that it's supposed to stay there. This pastor ain't doing that. I already know we're healed. I already know we're set free. I already know what was done on the cross. What Jesus died for to give me, I got, and so do you. And my responsibility is to get you to understand that truth. So we ain't playing games. I got to convince you that he's not a liar. That what he said is real. And that you walk out these doors going, I believe. Oh my gosh. I believe. Brothers and sisters, that's when things change. Because that rhema in your heart is what starts producing in your life. Logos can change. Logos can change. You can have a way of thinking and that can totally change. Rhema, where it comes here, is where the power of God lies. And that's what I want us all to operate in. Because some of you are needing some supernatural in your life. Amen? Yeah. You needed it become like Mary did. Let it be done. You know when Mary conceived? Anybody ever think about that? We don't process it. We make assumption or we, it's an unspoken thought. But we think it's, you know, later down the line, you know, something supernatural happens. You know when she became pregnant? Let it be done to me as you have said. That's when it happened. Because it has to do with conception and a planting of seed, we have a hard time even hearing what I just said. I already know you do. Because you're already going through the process of what's required naturally, so there's gotta be some type of, no. The word of God makes it very clear. 1 John 3, 9. Anybody know what that scripture is? You were born of God. And because you're born of God, you can't sin. Because the seed, Greek word spermata, seed, his seed, spermata, lives in you. And what does Acts say about becoming a follower of Jesus? Call on the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. The seed of God instantly entered my spirit and I was born again. The moment Mary said, I believe, let it happen. Seed of God entered her, her, her egg and instantly took place. God's trying to do some birthing in your life. There are things in your life that you're like going, I, I need this to come alive. I need this to happen. Well, you need the seed. You need to believe. It's, it's, you, you already know what my understanding, rightfully understanding of knowledge and wisdom Knowledge is something that we all run around with, but wisdom is what we need. Because wisdom is the application of knowledge. See, we, wanna, we look at some people that are wise people because we see them operate and act correctly to knowledge. And we say, that person's wise. And then we know a lot of fools that have a lot of knowledge. I know, I know. I, you want to hear much how I know? And you look at their lives and go on, man, you don't know nothing. I would never want to be like you. You know everything, but I wouldn't want to be like you. I don't want to be that person. I don't want to be a person that I know. 
I want to be the person you look at and go, that's a wise man. That's a wise woman. Not me, woman, but other people, right? We don't believe in that. I'm a wise man. I want to be able to look at you and go, you're a wise man. Why? Because you chose to take the Logos and make it Rhema. You acting awesome now. Anybody got this? You learned something this morning. All right, cool.